Hey guys, welcome to another one of my videos. Today, we're going to take a look at the Sam Yang Recluse 357. Um, this gun, my particular gun, is going to go through some changes. I've already started tuning the gun. Um, my goal on it is to change the barrel from the factory barrel to an aftermarket TJ barrel liner um, in uh, 357 caliber. Reason being um, is it's a little longer than this factory barrel and it's a faster twist and it's going to allow me to shoot uh, bullets that I, I, I'm choosing. Uh, I'm going to be casting my own bullets. So it will allow me to shoot those bullets. I think this is about a 1 in 20, 1 in 22. I'm not sure. I haven't done the test on it yet. Um, but the one that I have coming up is a 1 in 16 twist. So it's going to allow for, you know, a little bit longer bullets than what this thing would shoot accurately. Um, and I'm also going to be doing an accuracy comparison test between the two, between the factory barrel and aftermarket. Um, but I've tuned it just a little bit. I've made a few custom parts. We'll take a little a look at that a little bit later. Um, right now, let's go ahead and focus on taking the gun apart. So I'm going to throw up a, a picture in picture of the process for each uh, step. Now for me, who am I to tell you guys where to start? Uh, as far as if you start at the butt end of the gun or the muzzle end of the gun, as far as taking it apart. But the one thing that we all can agree on is when you take this gun apart or any air gun, any powder burner, anything, for air guns, always make sure the air tubes are empty. Fully discharge the gun, please. You start trying to take off fill adapters and stuff like that are in pieces for on the fill tube and you're going to blow yourself up. First of all, you're not going to be able to unscrew this because you got 3000 PSI holding it tight. I'm not even going to get into the safety factor of it or what can happen. I think we all should know this by now. Um, you want to deflate the gun, the air tube. So please discharge the gun, make sure it's totally empty, then start disassembling the gun. So that's my little disclaimer. Have a little coffee real quick. Okay, so as you guys can see, the gun's fully disassembled. I'm still gonna go over it shortly with some pictures and pictures up here. Um, it doesn't matter which end you start from, but let's start with this. Before we take the gun apart, let me show you guys what you're going to need. You guys are going to need a long screwdriver. This is one of the things that no one tells you because most of you guys send your guns out to be tuned. Um, Reason being is that there is a, a little piece here that goes in the back of the receiver, like this. This screws in. The butt stock goes over that. There's a nut in here. Your screwdriver has to be able to unscrew this. And you say, oh, but why is your screwdriver like four feet long and you only need a foot and a half? Yeah, I'll show you why. So this is one reason why you need a long screwdriver, to disassemble the butt. You have to disassemble that to get to the hammer spring and everything that's inside of here. So you'll need a long screwdriver for that. You'll also need a long screwdriver for you guys that want to disassemble this thing to get to your valve assembly, which is in here. Well, look, here's where the long screwdriver actually really comes into play. Once you want to screw this in cap, in piece, you have to take this and put it all the way in like this. So see how much that is to be able to reach the uh, tip of the valve. So you have to unscrew the valve and pull it out. Yeah, it's a little weird. I think Crossman or some other people did the same thing. The valve body basically bolts to the uh, upper tube and it has an O-ring that keeps everything from leaking out. So there's an O-ring in here um, that seals the valve body inside the uh, tube. So when you unscrew the head, it decompresses the O-ring. And when you take the screws out for the valve, it allows you to push the whole valve assembly out. So obviously this is the shorter end. So when you unscrew the head of the valve body, you can just push the rest of the, the, the valve assembly out the back of the air tube. So. That is the reason why you need a long screwdriver. All the tools that you're gonna need are spanner wrench. And this spanner wrench does not exactly fit, but I, I know how to make it work. 
you're going to need that to disassemble again on the air tube here when you put this on this screws on here well it's got little holes drilled in it and the only way to get them off is to put your spanner wrench on here like so and turn it so you're going to need a spanner wrench i don't know where you get it from i have a whole bunch of tools i have no idea where i got them from they've been here for years i just hold on to stuff and at some point all my tools find a purpose so even though this spanner wrench doesn't exactly fit there's a little piece of uh, metal that I can put in here and it fits perfect to where I can pry it and, un and unscrew this. So, you'll need a spanner wrench for these. There's two of them. Dos. Okay, another thing you're gonna need. Standard number two or number three. I just use a number two Phillips screwdriver. Everybody should have one. Another thing you're gonna need are various T-handles or Allen wrenches. This is a 532nd. Also, I think I have an 8th or a 16th. And the Allens, you're going to need one for the front sight. I think this is like the 8th or the 16th or whatever it is. You guys, are, I'm sorry, I'm not being, I don't have, have it here, but you're going to need a complete set of Allen wrenches. And like I said, the reason being is when this slides in over the barrel like this, the barrel is through here. It this front uh, band tightens down on the barrel and the two, these pieces for the spanner wrench, they screw on here and hold this end cap on. So you're gonna need an Allen for this. So make sure you have a complete set of metric and standard Allens. You're also gonna need a punch set, like what I have here. You're gonna need this for the rear of the, this tube gets a lot of work, doesn't it? For the rear of the tube here where the hammer, um, the hammer spring and the plunger for the hammer spring goes in here, you push it in and a, a pin, roll pin goes through the, uh, the plunger, the spring plunger. So it locks the plunger in here. So your hammer and your uh, spring are in here. And that's how that's retained in the rear of the air tube. Okay, now that we've done all that, let's go ahead and get to the disassembly. So what I did was I started with the front, the barrel band, and the air tube band. Disassemble or unscrew the two Allens. Then you're going to want to unscrew with the spanner wrench the two uh, barrel band retainers that goes around the air tube or in front of the air tubes. Okay, once you do that, you should now, it's gonna take a little pressure. You're gonna now, you should now be able to slide this off the barrel and the barrel band. Okay, now you can go to the rear with your long screwdriver and stick your long screwdriver in the opening here in the butt stock and you're gonna unscrew the piece that's in here. Um, when you get this gun, this is gonna be sealed. There's a rubber piece that goes in here, a plug that plugs this. Just remove that plug with a dental pick or something. Um, reach in here with the long screwdriver, unscrew it. Once you unscrew it, this, and this once you unscrew this the buttstock you have to pull the buttstock off then you have your receiver and this piece just unscrew this with your hand there you go okay after you've um, done that once you flip the gun over you're gonna see the trigger assembly inside here like this. Now this is all disassembled for so for the sake of simplicity, you'll unscrew with your Phillip, this screw, this screw, and the two side screws here on the side of the receiver. Self-explanatory. Unscrew those, and now you'll be able to pull this whole trigger assembly out. Be careful with the trigger assembly. There is a spring that goes underneath the sear. So here's your trigger assembly, here's your sear, and they go together just like that. That's how this works. These guns are simple. And there's a spring under here. So just make sure that you don't start flipping stuff and drop your spring in. If you have carpet like I do in my garage, you'll never find the spring. And this is an aftermarket spring, this is a lighter spring. Again, I've mentioned that I started tuning this gun already. This is part of the tune. 
Right now my trigger pull is about two and a half, three pounds. Um, I don't remember what it was before, I didn't even measure it, but it was five pounds easy. Um, so anyway, I've measured it now with this spring and with a lot of trigger work, it's two and a half pounds. Anyway, we'll get into all that stuff later. Let's go back, rewind. So now when it's like this, and the tube is inside the gun like this. I should have said it before, but one of the things you want to do is first remove this, the scope rail. Yeah, it's a little cheesy dovetail scope rail. Don't like this at all. But just remove the, unscrew these two screws with your Phillips. That pulls out. Now you can go back to the process of sticking your screwdriver in here, unscrewing this, pulling this off unscrewing this there you go now the other thing too is once you flip the gun over moving on to the next step like I say you can do this anywhere you want it, it doesn't once you got the gun deflated it doesn't matter if you go back to front to middle to back to front to middle or if you start front middle rear it doesn't matter you're gonna get to the same point but again this is here like this use your Phillips and unscrew the um, Form from the form. <laughs> no, unscrew your form stock just using your Phillips. Pull this off. There you go. Simple. So now the next thing you want to do, and this is depending on how far you want to go, this is where your punches come in handy. Take your punch and knock the roll pin out. Once you knock the roll pin out, this whole assembly now will come off. So here's your plunger and here's your mainspring. Here's the hammer. It's that simple. That's it. So now the next thing that's on here, and this is depending on how far you guys want to go, if you want to take the valve out, which I've done and do some modifications, you can remove these screws. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Once you remove these screws, you now have to go to the front of the gun and simply stick, use one of your punches, stick it through the disassembly holes here and just turn these and unscrew them. They just screw in. Unscrew it and now you have access to your uh, valve that's back here. You can now unscrew the head of the valve and once you unscrew the head of the valve and you have these screws off here, you'll be able to pull the, push the whole valve assembly back through the gun and have the whole valve assembly. I'm not gonna do that in this video. Like I said, it's self-explanatory, but I don't have any gauge, gauge leak issues. I'm not gonna take this thing apart. It's It was in from the factory, no need to take it apart, no problems with it, I'm gonna leave it in. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So anyway, that concludes the entire disassembly process. All right, so let's get into a little bit of tuning here. When I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. I don't want to get too heavy into this as of yet. Um, one of the things that uh, I did already is I removed the valve. I'm not going to do it in this video. I removed the valve, and on the valve head, which I'll put a picture up here, um, the head of it is the inlet. It has a hole drilled down the center and it has a slot for a screwdriver. Well, in the center of that hole is where the air from the air tube comes into the valve body. And the valve is here. So once the hammer hits the back of the valve, it opens up like this and the air goes around that valve and out through the barrel. Well, that hole, I increased it to like 0 .300, 0 .305 or something like that. I don't remember the exact drill bit, but it was like 0 .300. I just made it a little bigger. The other thing I did was I had my machinist, um, the head of it is round like this, and this goes inside the air tube. So if you think, if this is the head this way, and you put the screwdriver in here, you have a hole in the center that lets the air flow into the valve. Well, what I did was I relieved I squared it here and here at the bottom. And once I did that, the neck the, or the body of the valve is here. Well, that body is like a waist. 
it goes like this, it goes down, and then it goes this way. And what I did was right in here, not only did I open up this hole to 0.300, but here I made two 3 16 inch holes. So I drilled the hole straight down, and on the other side I drilled the hole straight down. Reason why I did that is just it can flow more air from here and into here. Um, I'm pretty sure if you just want to open up the center one, like I said, do things in moderation. One thing about tuning is you don't want to just start opening holes up everywhere. Um, the other thing that I'm doing is I went to the hardware store and I bought some shim. And the retainer or the plunger, the oops, 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 oops. Can't have a video without a blooper, can you? The spring plunger here. This thing is about three eighths of an inch wide. So I went and bought a washer that has a three eighths inside diameter. And it's about 0.65 inches thick. So that just slides over like that. And this goes on top. So what that does is it makes more compression. It makes the spring hit harder. The more shim you build up, the harder this thing, the, the uh, stronger the hammer hits the striker, therefore opening up the valve more, therefore flowing more air, therefore making the gun more powerful. Um, I've used a piece of shim that was 0.100 of an inch thick. That's 0 0.100 inches thick or 0.1. That was a lot. Um, basically, the gun uh, was probably shooting like 900 feet per second or so like that on low power. And I have no idea what it was doing on high. It was just, it was too much. I didn't want that. And that basically limits your gun to like a two or three shot gun. Um, two shots. So what I did was I went and found something that was smaller than 0.100. And this is 0.065. What I'm going to do is take a, I thought I put it over here. But I'm going to take a file. And I'm just going to sand this down to like 0.60 or 0.55. I haven't decided yet. I'll probably start at 0.60 and shoot the gun from there and see what kind of velocity I get. Because what, what it is, is this is a 290cc tube. I don't have the 500. I don't want this thing to become a dumb gun. I don't want it shooting 1100 feet per second or whatever. Uh, it, it, that's too much for such a small chamber, uh, air chamber. The other thing I did was I had my machinist make me a custom cocking handle because I heard the old, the original one, uh, breaks when you pull back to high power it snaps off it's cast metal it's cheap looking i don't like it i was already leery i did my research so i just eliminated it had my machinist make me one out of stainless uh steel let's talk weight here of the hammer here's the factory hammer i'm still using the factory hammer i'm going to keep using the factory hammer this hammer weighs 2.8 ounces or 78 grams. Here is the aftermarket cocking handle, stainless steel. It weighs three, 35 grams or 1.2 ounces. Combined, we have four ounces or 113 grams. Um, the original or the OEM cocking handle, I don't, it's in my parts. It weighs 20 grams. This is 35 grams, so this is 15 grams heavier. The reason why I did it um, was to only, was two things, to help with rigidity and strength. And the second thing was to add weight to the hammer. To uh, the problem, one of the main problems with this gun is when you first get in, you shoot it, the valve bounces. So when you shoot, it goes boring. And so I added more weight to the hammer. So when it went forward, it would actually go forward and the return spring couldn't push it back. It would just go forward and stay like that, like a dead blow, basically. Um, when you add weight to something and when you, you know. Um, the other thing that I did was in the valve assembly, when you unscrew the head and pull the whole valve out, I actually took the valve return spring and on that valve return spring, I cut like four, three or four coils out of it. 
Okay, so with the trigger, here you have the sear. This is what... I'm sorry guys, I'm looking at this upside down. You guys have to excuse me. So this is what locks on the hammer. This is your sear. Here's a trigger assembly, okay? If you look closely, see that little notch in there? These two go together like that, okay? Does that make sense? Like that. This spring goes in here. This gets closed over here, this goes like this. So now as you can see, this is what grabs the hammer. So this stays down and when the hammer slides over this and it finds a notch, it goes in that notch. So as you pull the hammer back like this to cock it, the hammer goes over this thing and once it finds a notch like this, the hammer sticks. So when you squeeze this down even further, the hammer goes forward. So what I did, long story short, is I ground the contact points here, or polished, I should say, not ground, polished. Let me correct myself. I polished here, and I also got a jeweler's file and polished in between here these two engagement points. So now this is smooth as silk. I also polished here just a little bit the ramp up here. I just polished it. I didn't remove, don't do not remove material. If you remove any material using a grinding stone, your gun probably won't cock or it won't stay cocked. You don't want to change this profile. This is what locks in the hammer. Do not change this. Polish. So again, safest thing to do is just to polish here and here. That's it. And I also changed this spring. To a lighter spring this is not the factory spring factory spring was heavier than this so when you squeeze down you were pushing you were compressing this spring the lighter the spring the lighter the trigger weight that's a tip for you guys all right that pretty much concludes the video for this thing hopefully the next one you'll see on this gun is you'll start seeing some performance on all the results um, when the gun is finally put together I uh, thank you guys for Joining in and watching the video. I hope you guys found it interesting for you guys to have the Samyang guns They're pretty much a sense to take apart. It's nothing difficult about them. It's nothing difficult about tuning them um Okay <clears throat> We've just put the gun back together. We've just made a couple of adjustments uh, in the power setting so I added the 0 .60, 0 .060 inch shim, relubed everything, uh, and anyway, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Here is uh, low power JSBs. Now I only have 2,900 PSI in my tank, so that's all I'll be shooting. But let's see what kind of performance gains we get. Right, let's try the 9mm, the 360 diameter bullets, the Bob Botel. All right, let's try round ball.